these young and, 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 and coming up fighters. I don't know them like that. Yeah. I see what you're saying. It's, it's, it's hard. It's, you know, what I'm going to say is challenging. You know what I'm saying? It's challenging for me to try to keep up with him, too. But this guy, um, you know, I could I could show you some stuff or have you, you know, look up some stuff. But this guy, he's going to be fighting on Saturday. And um, so you can, you'll get a chance to see him. I've seen him um, a couple times. You know, I, I see posts and things like that. But it's not a real big push behind him, even though I think he's the next up at top rank uh initially but i think he got next overall because you know everybody always throwing around all these names but nobody is saying his name and he's he's pretty much respectful because he's a smart young man but this dude is a big problem so i don't know but what's been um what's been going on in your in your boxing mind though what you been on here lately you know what you been what, what's been going on what did what are the tea leaves saying well, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm just really disappointed that we didn't get the Spence and the Bud fight this year. I'm really disappointed on that because all signs were showing that it was going to happen. And the reason why I say that is when Bud left uh, top rank, and he got rid of Bob Earp. To me, that was an indicator that he was ready to cross on the other side of the street in terms of letting somebody else promote this fight other than Bob Earp. Mm -hmm. So when that happened, I say, okay, we're going to get this fight now because one of the main problems in this fight is Bob Earp. You know, trying to negotiate with Al Heyman to try to have some kind of working agreement. Mm -hmm. Because that's always difficult when you got two promoters that want a piece of a fight. So when Bud said, listen, I'm away, I'm away from Bob Herb, I'm ready to get this fight done. I thought it really was gonna happen, but you know, uh, we all know what Spence wants because he made it. He made it clear. I'm one. I want to clear up my side of the street, which means every fighter that is willing to work with, with PBC, which is Al Heyman, every fighter that was willing to do that, he did. He did his part. He cleared up his side of the street. Now it's only one strap left, and he made it clear. I want, I'm coming to get that. I want Terrence Crawford. I'm gonna take his motherfucking strap too. You know, <laughs> man. I and, and you know, these are the words that he he did this in the middle of the ring after the you guys fight. And see me, and, and see me. Look, this, this is this is wild. I'm just I'm just really enjoying. I'm enjoying hearing you. You know, I'm enjoying hearing you because he made it crystal clear and see me one of the things about when i watch boxing i like the ceremonial part of it and part of the ceremony is like when you're courting a champion or it's a big fight like in history historically it is a thing to go to someone's fight it is the one to say because that's a moment because if that fight happened next they can go back to that footage they can use that you know what i'm saying they could just it was a whole experience so the protocol is you go and then when you get in the ring, you know, after you win, you say who you want next or you do whatever. Now, on this, on this part, Earl went and did what he needed to do with Ugas. Much respect to Ugas for getting the job done against Pacquiao, who keeps Thurman underestimated. So shout out to Ugas, yeah. respect to Ugas, right? But Earl got in that ring. And he said what he said, what you just said, right? And that's the ceremonial part because that's what everybody wanted. So it's like when, when he do every, when he do what he said he do with all those hiccups, and then you know the little, you know, you know the thing, the hiccups that he had in his career, and then he got, you know, what I'm saying he got that third one, and he did exactly what he said. So 
I'm listening to a lot of people, and I'm like, man, this is one of them things, perception versus reality, because everybody keeps giving the other side the benefit of the doubt. And I keep saying, man, like, like where were you guys all of these times, all of these times when we gave him the benefit of the doubt in each one of these situations? And now we don't get it this year. And, and I'm going to give it back to you, but I, I want to ask you this. I want to ask you this. And then you can have it all because I'm, I'm done after this giving my opinion on this, you know. But the biggest loser in this whole situation is Derrick James. Derrick James could have yes. went down in history possibly. We're just saying if everything lined up for Mr. Derrick James, he could have made history and had two undisputed champions at 147 and then at 154. And all signs, just like you said, all signs or all the energy was leading to that. He was going to be able to accomplish that. Nobody's talking about that. Nobody's thinking about that. They're thinking about one guy with one strap. And I've never heard so many people be so excited about somebody making $10 million when you could have made. Who knows what you could have made? Everybody, you have everybody in the palm of your hands and you chose to look the other way and and what do you think about like you know you can mix in Derek James but like I, I'm gonna let you have it like whatever you want to say however you want to say I'm gonna just listen because I'm, I'm tired of giving my opinion and I really value yours because you know you you love boxing and I'm gonna get it from a seasoned double retired veteran role model citizen you know what I'm saying like I, I just want to know I'm going to tell you like this. You know, with Derek James and the tremendous work he has done with Spence and what he's done with Charlo, okay? Right now, this one man, Terrence Crawford, is impeding the progress that he's trying to make because with both of his fighters, he wants both of his fighters to move up. Now, he wants Spence to move up after he fights Bud. And in Spence moving up, that means he wants Charlo to move up too, to make way for Spence, because he don't want both of these fighters to have to fight each other. Now, Bud is holding up two fighters from moving up. He's in the way of Charlo. Charlo wants to move up to make room for Spence, but he don't want Spence to really move up until there's unfinished business with Crawford. And then Crawford makes in the, in, 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 in the midst of this fight coming up or trying to be made, he makes the outrageous comment of if I don't fight Spence, then I'm moving up and I'm going to fight Charlo. Where in the world did this big leap come from? You got unfinished business at the welterweight division. Why would you even threaten a challenge with Charlo. To me, that's a challenge he knows is not gonna happen right now. So why is he even saying that? I mean, why would he even wanna dump Earl to fight Charlo? Charlo has already said, I'm looking to, to, to move to the next division. I, I don't understand Bud's philosophy in all of this. The man he needs to fight is Earl Spence. Now, if you get by Spence and you come away with a win, then you have every right to say, okay, I want Charlo now. How are you going to go to Charlo and you got unfinished business with, with Spence? For, for me, it's even it's it's for me it's even bigger than that. Look, man, but, man, if you seen what man, do you if you seen this, 
Let's just say Caleb Plant would have did this last year when 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 Ginger was on his tour for Undisputed. Let's say let's say Ginger would have pulled this move and went and fought somebody that you gotta Google. You need you need Google Translator to find like this this guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, what if he would have did that? So you really think now, Charlo? You got to respect Jamel Charlo, and nobody respects what he says, which is crazy to me because he's supreme right now. He is supreme right now in my book. He went and got all them straps one by one. It was a controversial, controversial decision. He came back and stopped his man. So in the, in the decision loss to Tony Harrison, all due respect to Tony Harrison, in the decision loss, in the controversial decision, he lost. He waited. Tony Harrison, you know, had an injury. He had to wait. He came back. He stopped Tony Harrison. Same thing with Costano. Fight could have went either way. If you, I wouldn't argue with anybody if they picked one on that one. I have reasoning to say okay, yes, to both sides. Either way, he gets. He goes right back. These guys are not going to go fight nobody else. He goes right back. And he stops Castano. He came out and told Bud, listen, go get, go, you got business with Spence. Everybody was saying, oh man, Charlo scared. Like, who is supreme? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is perception versus reality, and people don't like to hear the truth. Who is supreme? Because he went down there and got a preemie belt down at 140. So the fact that he could even think he can go to 154, meaning that he would drain himself down and out of his own mouth, he was saying he would go days at a time without eating to make that weight. And they say Spence was the, the weight bully. I'm like, man, do y'all even, a lot of people just like to really just, they like to just, it, it'd be hard for me to listen to him after this because it's like, you, you all are one of them people, man, that in real life, out here in these streets, if your same philosophy was like that, people would be reaching their hands in your pockets, you know, going in your car in front of your face. Oh no, man, I'm just, I'm just checking your gas levels. I'm just checking your fuel, cause that's not, that's not reality. The reality is these things are true, and I don't think that it would be fair to Charlo. I don't even think it would really be fair to Earl, other than Earl is something that he Earl want, he Earl want that undisputed that he know that's his legacy, and it's selfish, to me. And do you think they really want to deal with him, with him acting like this? Like, if, if he did this to Spence when he got them all, him going up and all this with Charlo, how long would that take? What kind of moves would he do? He gonna go get with this new company that I don't even speak. I don't even want to speak on them. But I feel, I feel how you feel, and I'm just like, man, this is uh, these other things to be happy about in boxing, but this, this one was like. This week has been crazy with all this, man. I I just had to hear from you, and, and I ain't, you know, I didn't even know that's what you that was on your mind. But listen, I'm gonna tell you uh, the way I see it. For Bud to say, if I don't get the Spence fight, I want to fight Charlo. To me, not only is that an insult, no, that's an insult to three people. The way I look at it, that's an insult first to Spence. Because why would you want to move from this division when there's unfinished business with me? Now, that's an insult also to Derek James. Because he manages Spence and he manages Charlo. Why would you doubt or uh, jump, in my viewpoint, my number one man in your division to come after somebody that's not even in your weight class and to know that I train both of these fighters, it's an insult to me and it's an insult to Charlo because 
I'm not even in your weight class. I look, you need to fight my stable me. And if Charlo was to take the fight with him, then that's a conflict of interest right. that involves all three fighters. It is exactly. a conflict with Spence, it's a conflict with James, yep. and it's creating a conflict with Charlo. Yep. So to me, to make that statement is outrageous because you have been told and you believe that you are pound for pound the best fighter in the world. I know many people say pound for pound he's the best, but as far as I'm concerned, I question even if he's the best at the welterweight. That can only be proven if you fight Spence. You have to. You you have to. You have to question that. You have to. Because it's not like you went and said, all right, let me go handle boots. Let me go ahead and knock all this. You know what I'm saying? Because if you was really... Listen, if I was big dog and I, and I thought that anybody from 47 or 54 I could slap to sleep, I would call, hey, young pup, come, hey, front center. Let me, let me, let me, hey, let me get this tune up with the young pup. And then let me, let me get in there with the big fish. If you were going to avoid the big fish. But Polynesian sauce, like really? But the, the scary part is, the scary part is, he's so stubborn. Sometimes he'll actually engage with this dude, and this dude might connect on Bud's chin. I'm not gonna even lie because in every fight, <laughs> in every fight, barring the Sean Porter, Sean Porter was, you know, what I'm saying, piecing him, but he ain't really, he ain't yank him, you know, what I'm saying, he ain't yank, yank him, but. In every fight with some of these guys, he has been touched. So if this dude, see, this is what this is why I have him in my age well games. This is why I said I said this was Ghost Protocol, and I have him in my age well games. This is why this see this is all these things that I've recorded about him. They're not aging very well. And anybody in my series in the age well games, I'm right. So I'm telling you, if this thing look. He think this cute for 10 million, but what if he go over there and get 10 million? And then buddy and buddy just by like what if buddy really hurt him? Like what if Birdie what 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 if he really hurt Bud? This dude, he but he done slapped to sleep the dude. So not only is it a risk that this dude might actually hurt Bud, right? But if he don't look devastatingly good. What if he don't look devastatingly good? What, he, what, what if he don't look like number one pound for pound? What, 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 you, what would you say to that? Listen, I, I already had reservations with the welterweight division because with Bud being proclaimed pound for pound the best, when it comes to a match between him and Spence, I have already seen, in, in, in my viewpoint, the way I look at it, he is not the A-side coming, to, coming into a fight with Spence. He's not the A-side. I look at Spence as being the A-side due to the fact that he has three straps at that division and is making an attempt to unify. So yes, we, you know, the boxing world gives Bud a, a bunch of praise, but he is not the most dominant figure in the welterweight division because Spence owns three of the straps and trying to unify. So the way I look at it, I consider Spence the A-side in this fight. I really do. I consider him the A-side. Bud has been listening to so much of the media and his own publicity that he fails to recognize he is only one-third of what the welterweight division is all about. 
the other three quarters is Spence because he owns those straps. So what is his problem? I mean, there's only one thing that could make me believe what Bud doing is correct. If there is a deeper insight into this plot, which you had mentioned, is this by plan to do this, to make this purse bigger in 2023? I mean, are those that pull the strings, is this a calculation they looking at for 2023? If it is, it's something much deeper than the average boxing fan can calculate. Right. I'm the average boxing fan. Right. And I'm not even going to try to calculate. I'm looking to see this fight now. But yeah. you mentioned all these purse strings being juggled for something in 2023. I, don't, I can't see that. As a fan, I can see what's put before me right now. Right. And the fight with Spence and Bud, the way I see it, was supposed to happen in 2022. It's beyond my pay scale to even think yeah. that this is ca- a calculation being made for 2023. I I, I can't see it because I mean, it's above my pay my, my my pay grade. I mean, and, and the only only reason why is because you know I'm I'm taking a roll out of everybody else's book. Everybody that I comment, everybody that I talk to this about, there's always some what if. Well, what if Bud was blah, blah, blah? I'm like, do you want me to go down the long laundry list and we're going to say that every time and we're always giving him the benefit of the doubt? Why, like, why are we always giving him the benefit of the doubt? And what's 10 million? Like, that's, I mean, because cause that's everybody. That's what everybody keeps saying. I'm like, okay, like, that's great. That's great that he's getting that. That's, that's excellent with a bank account but the the tea leaves are saying that it's it was more than that so i'm like i i don't i don't understand the logic like i try to unlike everybody else i try to keep the same energy like earl spence said i try to keep the same energy so if we look back at last year if we look back well if we look back earlier this year everybody had their foot on cambosis who had all the belts to do something with Devin it was almost like Devin was chasing him around and he had one strike and everybody was saying you gotta fight him you gotta fight him and I was like well, I mean, yeah, he got three of them, and he just won. I mean, the right thing to do would be, since it's a missing piece for him to unify, but if he does or he doesn't, these champions like Canelo, who made what you said earlier possible, going up to another division when you got unfinished business, let's thank Ginger for doing that, because that's, that's who set that trend and made it acceptable, because I hear people saying that too. I hear people saying that too, but in this situation, just think about it. This was not too long ago. Everybody had their foot on Cambosa's neck to fight Devin, and he had that one strap. He had that one strap, right? So I look forward, and I'm like, okay. I look back again. I say, okay, well, when Ginger had the three and he went on his tour, everybody had their foot on Caleb Plant's neck saying, oh man, you gotta come on in. He was just saying, look, I want 10 million. Yeah, I mean, that wasn't reasonable because, I mean, that was reasonable because of the numbers that Canelo was getting. Canelo was getting like 50, 60 million, something like that, plus whatever. You know what I'm saying? Rights and all this crazy stuff. And he said, I just want a proper camp. And everybody was saying, who's just stalling for? Canelo, with all them straps, actually walked away. And everybody said, oh man, he could do that. Yeah, he could do that because, you know, he is the cash cow. 
he is the cash cow. He could do that. You know what I'm saying? And then when he came back to the table, they were like, yeah, Caleb Plant better be thankful he got the 10 million and this and this and that. And he need to be because his resume don't. And it was all about the straps. But now, in this present day and time, when I bring up that Earl Spence did, just like you said, he said, I'm going to clean up my side of the street. The ones that take the easier deals, not the easier fights that everybody want to um, emphasize. I want to take the easier deals, meaning business-wise, meaning we can sit down at the table and we're going to actually fight one day. Not, not, on, not on Twitter, <laughs> not on Facebook, not on the gram. We were actually going to sit down at a, piece of, at a table. You're going to make some bread. I'm going to make some bread. We're going to put on the, you know what I'm saying, and we're going to get it on for these straps and here we are in present day and everybody ain't keeping the same energy everybody got an excuse or a way or they want to be passive now look i don't even care no more i don't even care what bud do now they just dismissive like no nah, that's not y'all that's not the same energy man nobody out here is really keeping it 100 you are the first one you are the first one you are the first one that i've heard keep it 10 times 10. Listen, when Spence said that I'm going to clean up my side of the street and then I'm coming for Bud, okay? We all know that. But guess what? He cleaned up his side of the street and went through some tremendous adversity to continue to try to make his mark the way he said it. He came through that car accident. Then he came through the detached retina. With all the ad uh, controversy that he had to deal with in order to clean up his side of the street, he did it under tremendous physical strain restraints that he had to encounter and he he persevered and he continued to do it and he did all of this because he wanted to fulfill what he said he was going to do and throughout everything he went through he was able to do it and he was able to do it in convincing form mm -hmm. and now for Bud not to come through with everything I don't know what Bud is gaining from this not unless this is some sort of calculated strings by those that run the purse strings because what more could you ask from Spence through what he has gone through and where he stands right now. This man has shown to be a true gladiator. And when I say gladiator, I mean, regardless to how you try to stop this man and, 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 and what has been put before him, he still has persevered. This man is a warrior in that welterweight division, and it only needs to be capped off with him getting that last strap. And he has dedicated everything to trying to get this done. In spite of the injuries that he sustained, he still persevered. So as far as the welterweight division go, the way I view it, Spence is the A-side, not Bud. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, you know, that's, to me, that was, I thought that was understood. I, I don't know, I mean, we, 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 uh, we operate, I guess we operate on a different set of, um, you know, boxing principles, which, you know, I mean, if that's, it's just refreshing to hear somebody outside myself, you know, kind of keep everything the same. But let me ask you this, though. Have you ever seen anything like this in the past? Like, 
like something I might have forgot about before. Like, is do you recall something like this? I have never seen an individual that indicated that the reason why this fight never came off is because of his promoter. Bud said that his that Earl could not get him the fight he wanted. So the only fight that I could think that he wanted, that he was saying that Bob Earl couldn't get, is the fight with Spence. He got everything else. Now, in order to unify, you've got to fight Spence. So he made it seem like Erm couldn't get him this fight. So he departed ways with Erm. And in departing ways, it almost said that now since you are out the way, I'm going to now get the fight that I want. You couldn't do it. I'm getting rid of you. I'm going to get this fight now. Only to... I mean, it is so mind-boggling that I'm almost a loss, a, a loss for words. You did everything you needed to get this fight done. And once you perpetuated yourself in a position to get the fight, the fight don't happen. So who do we blame now? I'm almost lost for words. That's why just a few moments, I just paused. Because I don't know what to say that would make it right for Bud to do what he's doing. I, I, I don't understand it. Unless, of course, there is a bigger plan that's made by those who pull the strings that I'm just not privy to understand at the level of understanding that I have in boxing and what I thought was gonna happen. I don't, I, I just, I am lost for words. Yeah, I feel you, I feel you. I mean, yeah, yeah. Like boxing heartbreak, man. Like boxing the hell you been, boxing the hell you on cloud nine, and then it'll, it'll break your heart, man. That's why you gotta be, you know, you can't, this ain't, this sport ain't for the fans.